ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in to July 2nd, 2019. Wait, sorry, I meant August 2nd, 2019. And the stock market volatility is back and it's about to be very, very volatile. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, you have to understand what that word really means and today was a perfect example you got to leave your expectations and ego at the door, and we're going to talk about that today. We're going to go over the keys for tomorrow, talk about what happened today and what caused the stock market to go down, and, and a series of other news, a bunch of other news that happened all at the same time, which I want to make sure you guys do not lose sight of, and now this is even highlighting the efforts to prioritize and even the benefits of the chat, baby. This is why we need all the eyeballs. We got to source information, so let's get straight to the point. You guys just like the video be there tomorrow live we're trading live all day you can see every one of these plays it's in the comments it's in the descriptions and most importantly post your watch list below if you made money today cool if you lost money today cool that doesn't matter we were talking about the future and what we need to do here i've been down and i came right back up I've made a lot of money and I've lost it all. Either way, we've been here before and we got to get to it and focus on what is happening and what is the next move and how we're going to protect ourselves and come out of this a lot and thrive. So right off the bat, what happened today? This is it, it overall was about a four or 500 point swing on the Dow. All started around 126 Eastern when Donald Trump tweeted a, a series of tweets and he said pretty much they're increasing tariffs by 10% and then even close till after hours and that's where you even got to see the market didn't respond as much until extended hours but he was saying some more negative stuff he said it could go as far as even 25 percent and add to it and this is on top of the other 25 percent tariffs of the 300 billion in goods that he already put on and he also tried to say that it was temporary to a degree now what happens from here th this is the main point and this is why the market reacted now and this is on top of what happened with the fed yesterday two big volume days back to back this was the largest amount of volume all year actually just shy of the 144 but even looking at the velocity of the move we can't expect a lot more vol a volume tomorrow and we're going to see how it plays out but paired with the fed this is going hand in hand with the, with the already you know awkward or even negative sentiment from investors coming in from the the rate cuts that really kind of disappointed but this is trump just giving it to powell he said you know powell said he needs more economic things he sees what powell did trump was like say less i got you and he even uh, alluded to that in some of his comments saying that this wasn't because of the, he was fine with the market going down this isn't really his responsibility kind of like when when powell says that trade policy isn't his and we're gonna go we we had the keys for the day yesterday these are for today i can't show you that one but this is what we said this was yesterday updated at 3 42 p.m looking for something similar how we close expecting a gap down and rip up to close barely above open and they said if it closes below that daily low after the rip that will be bad so that's what I'm expecting even coming into this and tomorrow but we didn't get the gap down it kind of opened slightly up and I said if that doesn't happen looking for a sell the rip type move and that's exactly what we got here a, a pretty big rip and a lot of people didn't know why and and the key was all lying within the option pricing and that's what we're going to talk about so again we need to look towards the future and I'll, I'll give you a little hint here if this is really going to develop into something bad we, we that's what we're going to be watching and, and again this is volatile volatility we're going to see this develop this isn't going to be you know now it's it's drama and it's going to go back and forth and there there's many parties associated but if the markets get bad enough what we could see and now this is where it gets scary because again we're entering a historically awful time for both china and economics historically when we've ever seen declines this is august is, is pretty important and even you know if it gets crazy and this is where now i would get worried and i if this occurred i would i'm telling you now because this this could happen again it's kind of on the table but we don't know yet maybe i am being a little dramatic but if this thing does occur i will get long-term puts and i'm gonna get full on bear mode and i and i don't know if this is what trump wants but we don't have a fed meeting like we said with those tlts the ones we got with september's and we're going to go over those plays they cover up until the next meeting in september but now's july there is no scheduled fed meeting in august however they could still call an emergency intermeeting 
rate cut or meeting to announce, hey, we need to cut rates again. And, and why I bring that up is, is that's what they've did before. And that was during the 0809 crisis when they began, began the rate cutting cycle. So that will be the next piece of bombshell news. But however, on the reverse now, watch out for walkbacks of any of these comments. I would not be surprised. And Trump even said, he said, it's, it's temporary. You know, you know, it's temporary. And he didn't even give China a warning. They're going to go back and forth. But watch for a walkback, which could, again, the markets, do, and this is where we're going to, we need to talk about the keys for tomorrow. Be careful because you don't want to be, you don't want to be caught up with certain expectations. Anything could drive the market right back up. But the key we want to watch here, this is already up a percent. The dollar dropped today. And like I said, once everything goes, that's when it's going to be bad. The dollar dropped. However, the Chinese yuan weakened. That is not how it's supposed to work. If the dollar drops, the yuan should strengthen. So theoretically, this is very, very weak. And even it's at 6.97. And now the instant reaction from the Trump tweets was crazy weakening. And watch this tomorrow. This is going to be a bellwether. We are now going to start looking at global currencies at, to give us indicators if we can't see what happened. Oil even dropped 19% today. And if that breaks the 50 mark and goes lower, watch that in mind as well too. But what I'm trying to figure out here was this China's response in weaponizing the yuan and using it to devalue and kind of you know, threaten Trump and show that what they're trying to do in the long range? Or are they kind of trying to hold it down now because they would have negative effects too. It, it is it's very hard to say. That's why we need to give this time to develop. But that's what's happened and that's what you need to watch for. The other side pieces of news, there was the cloud, the cloud computing thing with the Pentagon that got pulled. They said they're delaying that, but Facebook got another uh, FTC investigation over the acquisition. So I'd watch out for that. And we still had a few earnings do good. And even this MyGen, we played this, we did $40 into 1100. Some people cashed out uh, slightly more than I did. We even had someone turn like 300 bucks into in a 10 grand. Shout out Jay Hearn, baby. But there's a lot to keep focus on and even the same place. And now too, if you can't be on stream all day, uh, yeah, I could tell you, go get the stream alerts or whatever it may be, but watch these watch lists. We've documented every single one of these plays, even that TLT. I mean, I, I'm pretty amazed with myself on that. That play was very well telegraphed and those are already up a thousand percent, but stay active here. Come on stream, ask questions regardless. But now let's get into the keys for tomorrow, man. I'm again, even with the plays like my gen down to the, the Facebook graveyards came back to life a lot. Uh, almost a lot of these random plays there was a bunch of 500 to 1000 percent or more plays we've gotten in the last three weeks and there there was a bunch of winners so you guys got money take it go for the layup i, I got you the ball it's up to you do you want i got it through the defense you have a wide open lane do you want to pull up for the three and risk it or are you just going to go for the layup or are you five foot two like me and you're going to try to dunk it good luck and to put that analogy in, in a better context i think the decision is really based on what's the score of the game What's your account looking like? What's your financial situation looking like? What's the score? It might look cool and good if you pull up for the three and this and that, but if you're down and, or if you're, it's a tie game and you're very close to, to losing or if you try to dunk it and you think the adrenaline is going to get you up there, you just got to be careful. But here are your keys for tomorrow. And again, we went over that. We'll go over the TLT plays, but these are it. Let's make it big as usual for you guys. We got to focus on these, but understand what volatility means now. This is what I said right off in the morning, and I'm mad. I even called out those Apple 207s for three cents, and they close at like three bucks. I'm kind of pissed off at that, but what's meant for me is meant for me, baby. We good. So, but what I, I highlighted in the morning, it was going up and people were buying. And I said, I, you know, I saw the Starbucks, I missed it. And I said, wait, we have to wait on it and let the prices show. And the prices went up a little bit, but as it kept going higher and higher, they, they weren't going up too much. But the point was, we couldn't forget what we came off of yesterday. It was easy to see what was happening, but it, it's what I told you. It's not as much responding as remembering just what you know and wait and let the timing and patience come to you. You're really not going to miss out too much by waiting a lot, even, even on the downside. And this was the key I was saying during all this. We have, we've already spread out and sprinkled around so many plays and they were able to work for us and work very, very well. You don't, you didn't need to get greedy and, and try to add to it and go crazy on it and overpay. You want to be the person selling these dirt cheap graveyard contracts versus the one buying these now at extreme prices. But it's, it's all in your head because the minute it makes a bounce, it's going to get cheap, very cheap. But what is volatility? Volatility does not mean the stock market's just going to crash and that it's going to go down. The volatile elements are something that just react quickly and you can't even tell. It just, it means that you don't know what's going to happen and it means that it could change states very, very quickly. And that's what this means. And that's exactly what we saw. And, you know, I was expecting to sell the rip, but now 
the fact that it was the the trade wars and it was related to more trade war escalation alongside with the fed and bringing up all this this was a, a very very big piece of news and we're seeing how the market's responding so understand what that means that's why it could still bounce up and go crazy and in volatile it could change to bull mode back to all-time highs before you even know it even in one can at anything and again like i said we've been here before i've, I've sat through many of these volatile events and, and that's what I've, I've really learned and took it from that and now here's the thing if you guys are going to yolo and i i get i really we you know we got some culture in the call i, I love using the term sometimes but at the same time i kind of hate it because we're, we're talking finance we're, we're talking being serious here but at the same time be responsible if you're going to yolo use a no low amount that means and not your low amount, not anything big. You could go very, very small and you see literally those, they it was three freaking dollars for those apples today and they're at $300. Anything besides that, if you, when you do start putting out big mounts, you're gambling, you're addicted, you have a problem, you're not practicing self-control, go seek help, step away from the computer. There's going to be good daily plays. That's why I'm not gonna deny an opportunity when I see it though, and that's what I'm saying, but you gotta approach it smart and tactical here. There's gonna be good daily plays if and only if the volatility falls in the right range. So that means the volatility has to push it here. We talked about this on the night stream. It has, they, they have to be able to go to the money. So we did a YOLO on TLT and I'm expecting a gap up on TLT, but you gotta make sure it's in the range. If you're YOLOing and playing these daily plays and they're 10% out, some stocks aren't gonna move 10% in a day. Understand what's realistic and see what range is being set here, but you need to get something by tomorrow it has to be able to expire in the money. So keep that in mind. But again, always protect yourself with the little bit amount of monies. And now in these markets, you're better off with time. You have to think Shopify, Beyond, Boeing, FedEx. We All those plays were killer. We were ahead of them, so, so ahead of them, but we just didn't have time. The same 50 bucks one week over would have made you literally two, 3,000 bucks instead of expiring worthless. And that's where I want you guys to really start to take advantage of this and get time. That's what I did with the Boeing. We, we played the Boeing today. Remember, we had those 327s that expire tomorrow, and I only had two contracts that expired. I did grab a McDonald's YOLO during there because it was cheap. And I spent $12 on it and McDonald's hadn't dropped yet. And that's what I like. And McDonald's is going to be one of those plays. That's why I have it up here to watch tomorrow because it didn't react as much. And that's why I wanted to grab it because it was if everything was going to go, everything would start to go red. And then they were still holding up their green and didn't react as much. And we saw something interesting with those premiums throughout the day. But what I did with the Boeing, even though I was closer to the money, I was like five bucks away. It went from like 19 cents to 60. It came back down. I sold out at 40. It ended up at $90 at close. However, I just sold out and then I switched over to next week 300, which is way for that's a 10% move. But I figured if I was just going to push that same amount of money to the wall, and let it expire tomorrow I'll, I'll get then I, i'll justify a little bit out of the money but i'm going to look to pretty much sell the premium and get out of that 300 if there's another big move the time is going to give me the extrinsic value and that's the, it'll get iv juice from people getting worried and they're going to somebody will be willing to buy that shitty contract for a lot of money if it does keep dropping and at a fast pace so keep that in mind and now as simple as this insurance is expensive after a crash focus on the premiums you guys you don't need to predict anything let the prices do that for you. The prices are telling you something and the prices are letting you know what is a, a good opportunity or if it makes sense. Yeah, I, I should take this risk or not. Wait until the prices get to where they need to be. You guys got to snipe. Shout out to boot camp, baby. I do not care if anything meets my expectations, if it's going to go up or down, yada, yada, yada. A good deal is a good deal, Habibi. If the if the calls are a good deal, it doesn't matter if I'm the biggest bear in the world, I'm gonna take them and vice versa on the puts. You wanna go for a good deal on the options where it makes sense. If you could get in a certain percentage range for a little bit amount of money, or even then if you're, you're spending a little bit of money to get exposure to a bigger event, that makes more sense than spending a lot to or, or overpaying on something just because you're trying to meet your prediction or you're wrong and averaging down it and, and you have to do that and now lastly make your plays free and ride the wave uh, that's what we did on the tlt i bought five of them i sold out one of them i made that whole entire trade free on the 138 so i'm gonna do that with the september's here shortly or you you simply just sell out all the profits and take it to the bank and come back later until there's a better deal there and oh uh, yeah you might miss out on opportunity costs you might sell out early use it as a learning opportunity but that's not your only opportunity. Things, that's the beauty of volatility. A bird in the hand is worth more than a hundred in the sky, baby.
So keep that in mind. And now as far as strategy with puts in the plays you're on, and this is what I'm saying, it all depends on the prices. You have to take a look. So that my gen, we played that today. You guys could see here. Let me pull it up. There it is. We got that August 16, 33 call. And look at, we opened that on July 19th. That was about two weeks ago. We put it on the watch list. It was on the stream alerts. You saw it on stream. A lot of people said they made money on it. You see it right there. We bought it at 40 cents. But think about it. July 19th, I got a August 16th. And again, keep in mind what I was saying, even with that Nordstrom's yesterday. It had a month of time on this. So I paid 40 cents for a month of time. And we reacted the first time based off of news. And it kind of just held its value. It, it didn't really trade much. It even went down after that. And then it shot up today and we closed out at 1100. But now these were the plays. I made a beyond put today simply because beyond and the lockup agreement was at 160. And we're going to see how that plays out. And I, I still, I have a few of those beyond plays, even some that came to life from the grave after that move. But up until the morning, I, I played only three plays today. And I want to share with you again, how to how to, if you, you make a lot of money on a contract, it's not that the only op opportunity is you roll over or you sell or you hold it, you could get creative. And now this is where you have to understand how the options work. But the three plays I made in the morning, we got a, another beyond put that actually went up uh, about like 30% or something like that. And it's still holding. And again, we got time on that. And then I started playing my gen puts and then I did a UVXY spread right before the drop. And that one's actually, I got, I got that for September. And it was only 50 bucks to get it. And now even where the UVXY is at, surprisingly, we we're only like, at one point, we were only like 10, 12 bucks away. And it moved. You saw that move cost six points there. And that was only, it was, it, it was about, but that was about 400 points. So we'll see what happens there. But again, if that persists, who knows, but you got to still be careful with that play. But what I did with the MyGen, as it started to go up, what I started to do here, I did it at 950. And then I waited another 20, 30 minutes. I spent about what, 130 bucks here. At, on these two because I had a 33 call. So what I wanted to do is protect myself. It was like 954 or something. This was before it really started to shoot up. It was at 3637. My call was a 33. That contract was guaranteed worth $4. And since this was well, August 16th and not a weekly, I figured that 31 might suffice. And again, it went it went up a, a lot. So I spent that 50 that first 50 bucks on a 31 put to protect it uh, if it came down. But that's not the most ideal because the 31 put is still below the 33. So if the stock dropped below 33 by August 16th, I would have lost on that. Let's say it came straight down to 30. Let's say it went to 32. I would have lost on the put and the call. They both would have been worthless. But now as it came up, that's where I took the second one for 70 cents because then I got a 35 call for 70 bucks. So I still spent 120, 30 bucks total on both of those. But now by August 16th, even if I held it by buying that put cheaper when it was a lot more expensive, the, the simple logic is if I'm going to go, go worthless on that 33, that 35 put would be guaranteed worth $200 and anything below would have made money. And I could have probably got premium on the 31 before that. But even then... I spent a hundred something bucks on a hundred thirty thirty dollars for those additional puts total. The original call was forty. That's a hundred sixty dollars. Even then, if it closed below thirty three, that thirty five contract would be worth two hundred bucks minus one sixty from two hundred. That's a forty dollar profit. My initial investment was forty dollars. I would still walk away with a hundred percent gain no matter what on that play. Boom! I turned it into a win win, and that's what you want to do and try to do with this. And that's the next thing. So you guys remember the play of the day. The first one was Bank of America. We did the 31 call and the 30 put. These are now about 40 something cents in the money. And now they have the time till next week with the volatility. I think they're at like 70 or 80 cents right now. You guys can see here. You see we brought the Robin Hood up uh, a little bit. That's the, that original small account. But now they're at 74 cents, 73 on the bid, 75 on the ask. And we got the other one, but we spent about 20 bucks both ways. $40 total. We're up on that. And now it has a little bit of time, but we got to be careful coming in the next week. And the key is if things really do drop and you get deep in the money, it doesn't mean you always do this. You have to do the math. That's why that first my gen, it only had time. But if it's a weekly, you got to be careful. But if the deeper you are in the money, the easier it sets this up. If the puts become cheap enough or the other side becomes cheap enough, you protect it. So in this case, these are still 20 cents for the 30. So if it came back to 30, you that wouldn't make sense. You would break even on both of them and they would expire worthless. But let's say it, it drops another dollar now 
and then we could get like the 29 for 10 cents or something like that then you could guarantee it that if it does bounce up and it comes back up to 30 or whatever you'll guaranteed make a hundred dollars on the call so think about that and keep that in mind when you're going about some of these plays and how to do it and now too the tlts those plays were crazy if you guys remember and i said this on the watch list i said i got 50 of the september ones and i told you what my game plan was going to be for more i said i want to get more of those august and the best part these have uh, August 16th. These are even up until next week. Total cost 16 bucks. They're worth 142. You can see yesterday we bought them. We, we bought them there at four cents, and I bought five of them for twenty dollars, and then I sold one of them today for 22 bucks. So I still got all my money, and I made that free so I could hold these and ride these out. And that's pretty much going to be the plan. But now these ones still, they're not in the money yet. So we have to be careful in how to watch these. And then I also did a TLT YOLO today uh, for 10. I'm going to be watching these. And again, I said 10 bucks there. And that was me playing the gap up just in case. And then those are the McDonald 207s we got. But again, these are the gamble plays. Be there tomorrow morning if you want to see what's going to happen because we're going to use these to adjust and we'll see what opportunities there will be tomorrow. But if anything, again, I'm going for time. So that being said now, let us get into the plays. Watch Boeing. I like that. We made a play on that. Watch TLT. This is still my favorite. And let me tell you guys, TLT is not done. This is what I'm saying. Move on, whether you made or made money or lost money. And again, if you made money, think about what you could be sit, get money and keep cash for the future. And, and again, have money to even roll over. If you're down, no worries. TLT is going to make a move. Again, the theory is playing out exactly as we, we, we thought. And to see it do this, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. So I, until we, we get proven wrong on it, but even then, knowing how TLT works and the volatility, I'm going to wait to take, an advan take advantage of this when it does come down and, and watch these premium drops. It usually does that after some level of run-up or even as it's running up. If it stops running up as fast, the premiums get cheap. I'm not done with this play and I'm going to come back into it. So realistically, if you don't know what to do, you could just snipe TLT and, and wait for this. That's at least what I'm going to do. If I ever get confused, that is what's going to happen. But now it, during these events, I know what I want to look at. I'm going to look at Walmart and I'm going to look at McDonald's as well too. And then you could also see Caterpillar. They dropped hard and I'm going to see what other plays we could set up on there. And I have different spreads as well throughout the other account. But now if the volatility persists, I, I, blank, I wanted it earlier today and I, and I, I blanked on it. Apple, it's easy. I'm going to go for some of these main easy stocks, Apple, Facebook's a good one as well too. These things, they have growth, but the you, Apple is really, usually it's pretty cheap to get near the money. So if the, for balance plays and stuff like that, we're going to focus on that. And we did grab again, remember those buy dues from last week. And that's another thing along those lines, go after, like I said, the specific industries and see, but now it's less kind of identifying the individual movers. When we start to see everything get pulled back and there's this risk, I'm going to start going for some of these bigger names where we could get big moves on the underlying and then at the same time it's going to be a mix of going for the ones that are very volatile volatile big spreads and can move a big amount but then the apples and the facebook's which the contracts are pretty cheap because the contracts are priced you know about a dollar dollar fifty between the money so i'm watching all of these these are going to be the main ones i'm going to be looking at tomorrow none of the other stuff then there's facebook i will be taking a look at eem emerging markets and yang this is the inverse you can kind of use this to play that you want but this is the inverse of the China stocks. These ones are crazy volatile, but when it does move, it could really move. But again, when any of these ETFs, even like the TLT, you got to be careful what's going to happen, especially like even TLT. Even when TLT comes down, if, if there's any a bit of time on it, it's not going to make the contracts cheaper. What's literally going to happen is the spreads are going to widen. That's it. So the ask will usually stay the same and the bid drops until day after day and then before you know it then it just plummets and drops like a rock that's how they protect themselves and that's because that's the nature of how these move so keep your eyes out for that and then lastly starbucks too i'm waiting starbucks and mcdonald's i was waiting on a play on these i wanted the 97s for next week or the 93s we saw them at 30 cents and they kept holding their prices and that's what i'm gonna use i'm gonna use even mcdonald's as a place marker too but here's one you could look at and you could even see if you're gonna look at this i mean i i wouldn't pay unless it keeps really plummeting though but if i was gonna buy this for 30 and I thought that was too much after seeing what it did. I'm not going to jump in on that until I see this one drop. And that's what I want you to pay attention to. Pay attention to what the underlying does. And if these contracts still stay the same, which is more than possible, you're not getting a good deal.
and that's what you have to be cautious about so there's those and then as far as individuals i will look at my gen tomorrow and then we will see off the bat with earnings there is oled they killed it and also Arista networks too they they shot up and came down and i even said just watch out for expectations and how things are with this market and just be careful and we also had those amds those are up about 300 percent i'm gonna see uh but i have my exposure with the chip makers but tomorrow is going to be reacting and tomorrow is just going to be a real game of just picking out prices and seeing and I'm going to and I want to do it on the bigger names that are more susceptible to move and if anything does change call them out do your thing you guys know what to do so drop your watch list drop your like and I'm going to see you in the morning let's go <laughs>